Hello and welcome back to the Data Strategist channel. My name is Stuart and today I'm going to be taking you through building a data-driven culture within your organization. So before we start today's topic, please reach out if you have any questions or ideas or you just want to have a general chit chat with me, or even if it's not about today's videos, it's about other videos I've done, drop a comment in the comment section below. If you want to reach out to me on Twitter or LinkedIn, feel free to do so and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So what is a data-driven culture? Simply put, a data-driven culture is one where data is central to decision making for leaders within your organization. But the culture element really is from everybody from your executives to your frontline staff or colleagues understanding the importance of data and has access to the relevant data to help them make a better decision. That leads to this sort of data democratization within your organization. Now, why is that important? Well, when that happens, organizations with a culture are more likely to make better decisions and achieve better outcomes. The data itself can be used to identify trends, patterns, insights that can inform your strategy and drive your growth. But really, what's more important is it helps the company or organization stay ahead of the competition and adapt to all the changing market conditions that we've seen over the last three to five years. Now, a data-driven culture itself has a few key components. And what they've got is sort of six pillars. And what they are is leadership, communication, skills, processes, data quality, and measurements. What we're going to tackle first is leadership. Leaders themselves must prioritize and champion data-driven decision-making. They must be involved in setting goals and KPIs that are informed by the data, and less so, they could be involved in selecting the right tools and technologies to support data-driven decision-making. All of this really means is that a leader themselves must, number one, understand where the data comes from. What processes drive that data? How does that data get to them? How many hands does it have to pass through? How many ETL processes it has to hand to? They don't need to know the technicality of it, but understanding how that data is generated and moved right the way through to their hands is a really important aspect. They've also got to be able to explain to everybody why this is important and how they're going to be using it. And that steps on to communication. Everybody in your organization should be aware of the importance of data and have access to relevant data. Communication should be transparent and clear with data presented in a way that is easy to understand. We've all been to presentations by generally finance, I'm gonna call finance out a little bit here, that show you data as an accountant would wanna see it, very tabular, very number orientated, and not really giving you any insight into what's actually happening. Communication should always be ongoing. Regular updates and feedback loops help drive sort of change and culture within any organization. That leads us nicely on to skills. Now, employees should have the skills and knowledge necessary to use data effectively. We need to train and develop employees to help them have the necessary skill set. Now, employees need to be empowered to use data in their decision making. That is, this is the essence of your culture now. So when you've got executives who understand KPIs, who understand management, who understand sort of data-driven decision-making, that's great. But if you go down a few layers of management, are they really effectively using data in the right way? Nine times out of 10 from my experience, they're not. So what we need to do is make sure that they have the skills and the knowledge to, I'm presented with all this information, because we are in sort of the vast amounts of information that can come out of systems, processes, that get put into our sort of mid-management hands, and they don't really know what to do with it. So we do need to provide them training. We do need to show them how to use this sort of information that they're going to be given, and then empower them. That's the most important bit. Empower them to make correct and informed decisions. What we lead on to now is process. So processes should be in place to collect, analyze, and act on our data in a timely manner. So if we're looking to get customer feedback, we want that in our current timeline. What we wouldn't want is to collect information and that could take a month. Then we have to sort of analyze it or prepare that information. That could take another month. 
And then when we go to act on that data, we're two, three months out of sync with what our customers were actually feeling at that time. And if you're in a fast paced organization, that could have a massive impact on how you work and what your decisions you make in the future. So you really have to tighten that sort of process up to get the data collected, analyzed, and pushed out into the right hands in a very timely manner. All processes should be documented and communicated clearly with all employees. So if employees are generating data by using a system, they need to know how to use the system to generate the data collect correctly. Processes should be regularly reviewed. Systems change, process change, customer demand change. So you have to review your processes and update them to ensure they remain effective in your current market. Moving on to data quality. It is essential for any sort of data-driven decision-making that your data is accurate, complete, consistent, and timely. And it should be regularly monitored and improved as needed. Not having any monitoring in place, not having accurate data, you do not have a data-driven culture within your organization. You need to make sure that these processes that we just talked about lead to data quality. And then once you've got these in place, you can start trusting that information. You have a single source of the truth. And you build that trust with your employees, your data, and your leadership. Those three areas combined together leads to a much easier path of data-driven culture within an organization. But if you have poor data quality, the trust is eroded from an immediate standpoint and you cannot build from that foundation. The last pillar I want to talk to you about is measuring success. So measuring the impact of data-driven decision-making is essential to determine its effectiveness. You need to establish your baseline and set your targets and that can help you measure progress, identify areas of improvement or opportunity. Now measuring should be done regularly and consistently to track that progress and make adjustments as needed. So if you have a sales pipeline coming in and you want to increase your sales, you make a change in that sales pipeline or process and then measure after how effective that decision is. And that is essentially what data-driven decision-making is, is understanding when I make a decision, how does that benefit us or not benefit us? And that culture really comes alive when you start measuring those sort of KPIs that you set out or your targets that you set out. But most importantly is regularly monitoring them and consistently monitoring them. If you keep changing your KPIs, you will never understand if you've made a correct decision based on the data that you've been given. Or if you've made an improvement and you kept changing the KPIs whilst that improvement was being made, you will never be able to determine if what you've done has any effectiveness or positive effect on your business. In conclusion, building a data-driven culture is essential for success in today's world. Now, culture really does start at the top with leadership of an organization. And if that leadership focuses on those six pillars of leadership itself, communication, skills, processes, data quality, and measuring success, then you are on the right path of having a successful data strategy, but most importantly, a company that has a very solid understanding of data democratization and empowered employees to make the right decisions based off accurate and timely data. And again, thank you for today, and I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget though, to reach out for any questions, ideas, or thoughts that you have, or even if you just want a general chit chat, put it in the comments below, send me a tweet or add me on LinkedIn. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.